One of my favorite things to participate in when I attend a worship service is that moment when a new baby receives a name and a blessing. I have a few children of my own, and there's nothing more special than taking an infant in your arms, surrounded by the people you love the most, and giving them a special blessing. Sometimes the baby isn't the most cooperative, but seeing that circle of priesthood surround a young child and invest their energy and spirit in giving it a blessing is a wonderful experience. I even love the little Lion King moment when the infant is held up for the whole congregation to see. And in my word, the bishop's always been very careful to acknowledge the mother of the child sometimes even giving her a moment to stand up and be seen, whether she wants to or not. A baby blessing is unique among the ordinances provided by the church because it starts out addressing Heavenly Father. But then the blessing is given to the child through the authority of the person performing the blessing. Normally, a blessing starts with the recipient's given name and then proceeds from there. But with a baby blessing, the person has no name. So we start out addressing Heavenly Father and then give the rest of the blessing under our own authority. That's part of the reason why a baby blessing is a blessing and not a prayer of dedication to God. It might not seem like a big deal, but there's a significant difference between the two. President Russell M. Nilsson noted an incident where a young father, though well-meaning, did not understand that he was the one giving the blessing. President Nilsson said, May I voice a concern? It's this. Too many of our brothers and sisters do not fully understand the concept of priesthood power and authority. They act as though they would rather satisfy their own selfish desires and appetites than use the power of God to bless his children. I fear that too many of our brothers and sisters do not grasp the privileges that could be theirs. Not long ago, I attended a sacrament meeting in which a new baby was to be given a name and a father's blessing. The young father held this precious infant in his arms, gave her a name, and then offered a beautiful prayer. But he did not give that child a blessing. That sweet baby girl got a name, but no blessing. The dear elder did not know the difference between a prayer and a priesthood blessing. With his priesthood authority and power, he could have blessed the infant, but he did not. I thought, what a missed opportunity. Now, what does that have to do with Isaiah? Imagine you were asked to give a blessing to the most important baby ever born. I've been fortunate to bless my own children, but what if the baby you had been asked to bless was the king of kings? In the Gospel of Luke, after Mary had finished her recovery from giving birth, she and her husband Joseph brought the infant Jesus to the temple in Jerusalem so he could receive a blessing. The man they found in the temple for the blessing was named Simeon, who the Gospels describe as just and devout. It was also revealed to Simeon that before he died, he would have the privilege of seeing the Messiah. While this was slightly different from what we do today, it's the closest thing we have to recorded baby blessing for Jesus Christ. Simeon took the baby Jesus into his arms and wisely alluded to a prophecy of Isaiah, found in chapter 42, which reads in part, I, the Lord, have called thee in righteousness, and will hold thine hand, and will keep thee, and give thee for a covenant of the people, for a light of the Gentiles, to open the blind eyes, and to bring out the prisoners from prison, and them that sit in darkness out of the prison house. That is a beautiful blessing. And just two short verses capture what makes Jesus so special. Isaiah and Simeon called Jesus a light of the Gentiles, signifying that his mission was not just to the house of Israel, but to all people everywhere. Jesus opened the eyes of the blind and opened the door to free all people from the prison of sin. Like many of Isaiah's prophecies, this one has several layers. On the one hand, it is a prophecy about Jesus Christ, echoed by Simeon when he blessed the infant Messiah. On the other hand, it is a prophecy to the entire house of Israel to act as a light to the rest of the world. The Savior is the light we hold up. And through our actions to become like him, we hold up a light to everyone around us. And the message we share is that every little baby girl or boy has the potential to become like Jesus Christ and gain the same blessings that we gained. Whenever the priesthood is used to bless a child, it starts them down the road that can lead to exaltation and eternal life.